Joseph Crosby Lincoln, An Appreciation, 1921, by Hamlin Garland. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Preface Joseph Lincoln is not only a novelist of wide reputation, he is a public benefactor. His success has in it something heartening and corrective in the midst of work which appeals to the base and cynical in human life american city life his clean wholesome humorous stories of cape cod sea captains and their neighbors give evidence of the fact that there is a huge public for decent and homely fiction just as the success of his play shavings is evident that there is a paying audience for a decent and homely drama his books can be read aloud in the family circle with joy to all the members of it i know for i have myself read eight or ten of them to my wife and daughters they make no pretence of being profound or new or smart they are filled with the characters and the humour which are native to the cape lincoln knows these cape towns and their inhabitants as irving bachelor knows his men of the north woods for he was raised among them and lives in their neighbourhood several months of each year he looks like one of them like an old skipper hearty unassuming and kindly the task which he has set himself is one which calls for a keen sense of character democracy of sentiment and a fancy which never or very seldom loses its hold on the solid ground of experience his plots are sometimes negligible but his characters even when they seem a bit repetitious are a joy his prosperity is well earned hamlin garland joseph crosby lincoln a stretch of hill and valley swathed thick in robes of white the buildings blots of blackness the windows gems of light a moon now clear now hidden as in its headlong race the north wind drags the cloud rack in tatters o'er its face mailed twigs that click and clatter upon the tossing tree and like a giant's chanting the deep voice of the sea as mid the stranded ice cakes the bursting breakers foam the old familiar picture a winter night at home winter nights at home from cape cod ballads it was in just such a setting as this that joseph c lincoln made his appearance in this world had he been a few hours earlier he might have shared the same birthday with another illustrious lincoln abraham perhaps the fates held counsel and decided that it would never do to have two famous lincolns born on the same day at all events the vital records show that joseph crosby lincoln was born on the thirteenth of february eighteen seventy at brewster on cape cod not many miles from the spot where the pilgrim fathers landed after their memorable voyage just two hundred and fifty years before the old sea captains who have helped to make the cape famous and who figure so delightfully in almost every story lincoln writes are nearly all gone now but in eighteen seventy there were plenty of them lincoln's own father was one a veteran of many a daring voyage to far distant lands so were his grandfather and all his uncles and there were others on every hand indeed the population of the staid little village of brewster was made up almost wholly by sea captains and their families for fully a mile each way from the lincoln homestead there are only two ways from any place on cape cod every house contained a captain a year after the boy was born captain lincoln died of a fever in charleston south carolina and upon his mother fell the task of shaping young lincoln she was a brave self-reliant woman who had made many adventurous voyages with her husband and to her tender care devotion and inspiration her son has himself paid loving tribute in many of his poems and sketches in his boyhood young joe roamed the cape at will he knew every nook and inlet every place to fish every cranberry bog every sand dune and best of all he knew and loved and was loved by most of the inhabitants he rode the old stagecoach from harwich to chatham he knew the lightkeepers the fishermen the life-savers and the cracker-box oracles in the village stores 
the perfume of the green salt meadows the pungent pines and bayberry were as nectar to him the fishing boats the dripping nets the mighty surge and thunder of the surf along the shore were part of his very existence it is this wonderful familiarity with the subject the deep understanding and sympathy for all these various types and scenes that asserts itself so pleasingly and convincingly in all that he writes the racy vernacular of his characters rings true his folks are real people people that we all somehow feel that we have known in those days it was an accepted fact that most cape cod boys when they reached cabin boy age should go to sea as their fathers before them had done generally they sailed with a neighbor or a relative who taught them the lore of the great sailing ships and drilled them in navigation till they were ready to command ships of their own but young lincoln's relatives had other plans for him they thought he would make a splendid financier and arrange for him to enter a banking house in boston one can picture the mental torture of the young man thus miscast in his novel galusha the magnificent lincoln takes the temperamental galusha through this same experience laughable enough it seems as lincoln writes it in the story but it is doubtful if his own affair seemed quite as humorous at the time after many months lincoln escaped from the figures and accounts and he confesses i have always felt that they were fully as glad to get rid of me as i was to leave them he knew by that time what he wanted to do but it was not dear reader what you surmise he wanted to be an artist how many authors have begun with the brush later to discard it for the pen eventually under the guidance of henry sandham whose signature was the familiar high he went to boston where he and a friend began to do commercial work the young fellows were not overwhelmingly successful and often to make a picture sell better he wrote a verse or a joke presently he found that the verses sold better without the pictures he began to write verses and short stories in earnest verses in swinging meter about the old home and the folks down on the cape stories that revealed a quaint witty and wholly delightful people they were like a breath of invigorating salt air and the editor snapped them up with zest his first short story lincoln sold to the saturday evening post the succeeding ones landed in many other prominent magazines his verses appeared in harper's weekly puck the youth's companion and other journals about this time bicycling came into its heyday the league of american wheelmen was a flourishing organization of several hundred thousand with an official and very readable publication known as the bulletin lincoln spent three years as associate editor and when interest in bicycling began to drop he wisely decided to try his hand as a full-fledged writer to new york he came with a young wife and child to serve both as inspiration and incentive to bigger things in nineteen o two mr lincoln collected his verses to make his first book cape cod ballads it was a neat little volume with pictures by kimball many of these verses are read each season by mr lincoln in his lectures and the book has attained enormous popularity a new gift edition of these ballads has recently been issued in a box with our village another charming volume containing sketches fragrant of old times mr lincoln's first novel was captain airy that deliciously human tale of the three old sea captains who despairing of their joint efforts as housekeepers advertised for a wife it is difficult to guess at the number of editions that have been printed of captain harry and it is hard too to believe that the story which seems so spontaneously funny was written under great labor on a corner of the dining-room table from midnight on saturdays through sunday mornings until the manuscript was completed following captain harry mr lincoln wrote partners of the tide mr pratt and the old home house then came a long string of notable successes beginning with cy whittaker's place and ending for the moment with galusha the magnificent 
one remarkable thing about mr lincoln's success as a writer is the fact that each succeeding novel has a larger sale than the one which preceded it it is doubtful if any other american writer has a record as enviable as this there are three sometimes four hours a day that mr lincoln reserves sacredly to himself for work these are from nine in the morning until noon or one o'clock during which time he disappears into his workshop, the address of which no one knows but himself, and either writes or blocks out his characters and plots. It may be added that Mr. Lincoln scorns a typewriter, and when writing uses a soft stubby pencil and generously large sheets of yellow paper. Mr. Lincoln has little sympathy with the creators of fault-finding and sordid novels of small-town life, who insist that that sort of thing, and it alone, is realism. He has no desire to attempt this style of literature himself. Perhaps I could write a story with wholly gloomy situations and unhappy misadventures, he said recently, but I wouldn't like to try it i would much rather try to make people cheerful and keep myself cheerful at the same time life contains both laughter and sorrow and it seems to me that one is as real as the other the popular impression that mr lincoln uses actual people as characters in his books and actual localities for his scene is without foundation despite the fact that many people who have been to cape cod will swear that they know just the place or the person he refers to regarding this mr lincoln says in writing of a cape cod town or village although i purposely refrain from describing it as any one town in particular i have tried conscientiously to give it the characteristics of cape cod towns i am acquainted with the promontories and inlets and hills and marshes in my cape cod may not be found where i have located them but i have tried very hard to make them like those which are or were to be found on the real cape and so with the cape codders in my stories i have never knowingly drawn the exact recognizable portrait of an individual i have of course received hundreds of letters from readers who inform me in strict confidence that they know the original of captain blank and recognized him at once nevertheless they are wrong for no character of mine has been if i could prevent it a portrait of one living or who has lived i have endeavoured always to be true to type and in writing of the old deep-sea captain the coasting skipper the longshoreman or the people of the cape villages i have done my best to portray each as i have seen and known specimens of his or her kind but i have endeavoured just as sincerely never to draw an individual portrait which might offend or hurt and in attempting to transcribe the habit of language i have made it a rule never to use an expression or idiom i have not heard used by a native of the old colony as a matter of fact mr lincoln does not have to study cape codders he is of course one of them his very speech marks him as such the slightly clipped curt words the have and head that once in a while take the place of have or had and even whisper it a touch of good old yankee talking through his nose his great success has brought him to that happy stage enjoyed by comparatively few authors where his work is actually sought by editors for magazine publication years in advance of its being written his books are eagerly sought out by theatrical producers for plays and motion pictures a play based upon his novel shavings has been one of the real dramatic successes in recent years some years ago a reporter asked mr lincoln to name his favorite author he said in reply i have a good many for i read all sorts of books and at all times i don't know that i can name any particular author who may be called my favorite i am very fond of stevenson for instance but then so i am of kipling of mark twain of tarkington and many others i think i like a story for the story's sake i like to like my characters or dislike them in the old-fashioned way i realize no one can help realizing the fine literary craftsmanship in a book like lord jim it is a wonderful piece of character mosaic and yet in reading it i am always conscious of the literary work i say to myself 
this is marvellous see how the writer is picking his hero to pieces thought by thought motive by motive and being so conscious of the writer i do not lose myself in the story this is not offered as criticism certainly i should not presume to criticize mr conrad it is more of a confession of something lacking on my part i enjoy reading lord jim or the old wives tale but i do not return to them again and again as i do to well to huckleberry finn or the beloved vagabond perhaps this is as some of my realistically inclined friends tell me a childish love for romance on my part if it is i can't help it as i said this statement is not offered as an excuse but a confession this sort of thing shows in my own stories it would be very hard for me to write a long story which should end dismally it is only too true that stories in real life frequently end that way but i don't like my yarns to do so so it is fair to presume that in the majority of books i may hereafter write the hero and heroine will be united virtue rewarded and vice punished as has happened in most of those for which i am already responsible perhaps this same weakness for a story a cheerful story makes me care little for the so-called problem novel it doesn't mean that i am not fond of novels dealing with certain kinds of problems winston churchill's political stories or his the inside of the cup i like immensely but the sex problems the divorce question and all that sort of thing does not appeal to me a morbid lot of disagreeable people married or otherwise moping and quarrelling through a long story seem to me scarcely worth while to a specialist in nervous diseases such a study might be interesting but i really doubt if the average healthy man or woman finds it so certainly we should not care to associate with such people were they living near us we should get away from them if we could mr lincoln's favorite recreations are fishing and golf he still haunts the ponds the little lakes and the bays of his boyhood where the bass fight hardest and the largest pickerel are found occasionally he takes a jaunt into maine or canada to try his luck with the northern fish he works systematically in the morning at his writing but in the afternoon he frequently may be found on one of the beautiful golf courses overlooking the sea near his cape cod home or motoring over the cape cod roads or superintending a clam bake for a party of friends a task at which he shines as brilliantly as any of his captains his entire summers are generally spent on the cape but in the winter he goes to new york where he works even longer hours than in summer the lincoln clan appears ever to be exponents of true american life and ideals as abe lincoln our great president gave his all to upbuild america so too is joe lincoln endeavoring to uphold in his inimitable novels our finest traditions he is saving for us a precious part of america says hildegard hawthorne in her splendid tribute entitled joseph c lincoln's america writing down before it is too late a past recent enough but changing fast a past closely woven into the very fibre of our character and meaning as a nation he shows us too the coming era the cape cod of to-day against its background of yesterday and when i say cape cod i mean pretty much any part of our country that is not within the boundaries of a great city but that has drawn from the fountains of american heritage for its foundations end of joseph crosby lincoln an appreciation nineteen twenty one by hamlin garland read by david wales